Mary Mate, Annie here. This video is a little bit more information on the daily reflections along the Greystone Path. It is specifically because I've had a lot of people reach out to me since I posted about it yesterday. Daily reflections are a word a day and some writing that supports it. An opportunity to stop and pause, maybe to journal or to meditate, maybe to take on one of the declarations or mantras that I suggest. I want to tell you where that came from. All of it was inspired by my friend Monsoon Magic. I'm going to put a link to Monsoon's channel, one of my favorite YouTube channels, below. Let Monsoon inspire any of you who have the urge to share, whether it's your experience or your emotions or aspects of your life, that do not wish to be on camera. I declare on behalf of all of us who understand the reasons why you don't want this on your YouTube page necessarily. It is impossible not to become engaged with and fall in love with Monsoon, and you'll never see her face on her channel. So that's my segue. Monsoon is the one that inspired me with what end up becoming the Daily Reflections. Monsoon, let me get my book here so I can show you. She shared that in her learning and growing path, she's intensely studying her path at this point, she wanted to have something that was a daily way to track where she is, what she's doing, what she plans on doing. And she uses an educational planner calendar. They go from, I hope I have this right, from September, no, from July to July because the idea is a teacher will prepare for that new sem uh, semester in September. So they're working at that over the summer. Then they have the school year. So her link will show you how she's using hers. I hope that video is still up and I can link to it. And it inspired me in part to bring all the pieces of what I was doing together and not lose track of what I needed to lose me do for me, not lose me, do for me in the midst of that. So I went out and got myself a calendar. And this is the calendar. And you'll see here that it is, what's it called? It's an at a glance, 2014, 2015, and um, it's the educational version. And I'll show you what's in it. But I do want to show you if you can look at the pattern in it. And I'm going to add a picture in here of one page out of my personal book of shadows, which has been my project of this past year to kind of make an online, meaning an electronic, not a public, scrapbooky, artsy version of the rough notes that have always been the repeating rituals, espots and sabots, and even the occasional regular things that I do. So I'm going to put that page here because it's the filigree in this pattern which talked to me at Staples Office Supplies. And you can see why the two felt like they melded. So, that tells you why this particular pattern, you can see it better if I take the page off where it's not glary, appealed to me. So here's how these are set up. Mind you, this is all leading to how the daily words came about because there's something in this I think you might enjoy. The pages, in this, you get too active. Start out with a calendar page. And I'm slipping in a photograph here so you can see what it is. Now, as you can see from that picture, it's daily. I decided the only thing I was going to capture on those daily pages was every phase of the moon because I do divinations based on the specific phase in that day. I put down the dark and the full moons, including the span of the three days of the full moon, and I put down my sabbats, and some of them, I'm going to do another video on this, on processional celebrations, are now coming over a period of time instead of being one day. So I'm going to make note of that. So it's kind of like the, hmm, the tides of the rituals I do. So I use that full calendar page to track that specifically. And then, 
here's where the fun thing came into it, where these daily reflections came from. Monsoon shared, when she was talking about her calendar book, an energetic wheel of the year, which was aligning certain energies and emotions and words astrologically, astrologically, perhaps I could say that better, <laughs> astrologically, aligning those tides, those words, to the twelve symbols of the zodiac. And I gave it a quick glance. I didn't look at the words specifically, but all of a sudden it was like, oh my gosh, what a wonderful personal project this would be for me to decide what the words, what the energetic flow of every month every period within the four quarters, what they meant to me. I found that there were some words that inspired me in that energetic calendar that she shared. But I decided that what I wanted to do was, I was going to take a quick look at it for every month. If there were words that I was like, oh cool, I'd like to investigate them further, I would. But that would also be creating a list of the words that seemed to tie me into the season. So that became on the pages after the full page of the month. The first part of each one begins with a blank space and then it's basically, what's it, a week? A week at a time? And I'll put a better picture of that in here for you. So what I do is, and you'll see it in the picture I'm about to put up, I write a word on each day. Occasionally it's actually a word from that wheel that Monsoon found. Uh, the reason that works is because the wheel of the year for Wiccans is related to the astrological wheel of the year. So yeah, that's why some of those words would resound. Here's a picture of the words I place on the pages. Just an example of them. But here's the fun part. I wanted to get into some kind of a personal um, writing, journaling kind of thing. I've moved away from much in the way of personal journaling, except in ritual or in reflection on ritual. I kind of got, I'm just in a phase where it felt like I was telling stories to myself. We all get there, I think. I'll come out of it again probably, but I've been here before. But I felt the lack of some kind of a morning meditation that had to do with pen and hand. So what I decided to do was every morning I settle down with my calendar book that has the word I wrote on it. And I got a brainstorm in my mind where that word takes me. Very rarely does it take me to a place where I continue to embrace the original word. Sometimes it does, but usually not. Here's what ends up happening. Again, I will give you a clearer shot in a picture. We have the word then filled with all the words it inspires me. Kind of fills up the calendar. In different colors, colored inks. I was being very Sark, for those of you who are familiar with the way Sark journals. After those words appear, I spend time in that meditation in that morning decide which word from amongst the ones I've captured is the one that just resonates the most for me. And if we go back to the first, go back where you can see it here, the original calendar page, we go back to that original calendar page because it's the way it's designed for teachers, there is a list down the side. I think it says notes at the top. So it's kind of monthly, daily notes. And I capture each of the words, how they end up being for me. I love this process. It takes me maybe 10 minutes each morning. The words that end up on that list are powerful and meaningful for me. And then, after that 10 minutes, either then or sometimes it feels like later that night when I reflect back on how that word was with me during the day, if I'm honest, it's most often often becomes my end of the day meditation. I write something about that word. I didn't intend this to be something that was public when I first began. And then I thought about a daily word all the way around the wheel of the year. And I decided that I wanted to share it in my blog 
I share it on the Facebook page, and you can subscribe to it by letting me know your email address, and you'll get it in your email every day. And please don't misunderstand, this is not something I'm charging for. It's just part of my being in service, too. However, at the end of the year, I do plan on publishing it. Maybe as much to make an organization of it for myself to go back to, but for others who enjoy words and the power of what leads us to embrace a word and the emotions behind it and the belief and the inspiration behind it, and also the power in these words to relate us to a specific place in time on the wheel of the year. That's how this all grew. So now we've come this whole length. First thing is I wanted to tell you one more thing about this calendar. These daily pages that have all the words on it, the first one of them has a big blank spot at the top. Again, it's another notes page. And I have taken to re-exploring my relationships with a specific deity through the length of a month. So what I do is I find a salutation or a hymn or a poem I like best for that deity and then I put it at the beginning of each of these week pages. I start my meditations off in the morning by looking at that and then I go to my word. And I didn't tell you, if I can't fill up that whole space with the words that come into my mind, I love using an online thesaurus. It has taken me some of the most interesting, like alluvium, a word that I shared a couple days ago. That came to me by using a thesaurus, and I am in love with that word. Okay, I'm rambling a little bit there. So, I have a hymn, for instance, for the entire month of October. It was all about... You know, I'm looking at November. In the month of November, it was all about Callie. I'm still with Callie, reading her every morning. And I took part of May Sarton's poem to Callie, which shows up every day for me to meditate on. What came of this? Let me use an example, which is the word for today. That word is serenity. So, on the Facebook page, on my blog, and in the emails I send out for those who want to subscribe to them, that word shows up. Here's what comes next. All of this video led to, first, how did I create it and where it come from? I want to credit Monsoon for the way she inspired me. She always inspires me in so many ways. It's the artist in her soul, her creative power that gets my juices going very often. It's also the questions she asks. <laughs> you know that, don't you, my friend? I wanted to show you how it came to be here. You might like that process for yourself. The idea of meditating on a word per day, relating to the season and the energetic flow of the tide for you. And I wanted to show you how it came to be, what I'm now sharing in a public way. Today's word, serenity. Here is what I wrote for serenity to answer the questions that some of you had on what the heck is a daily reflection. Serenity. In the hush of fading color, the world holds less expectation of itself. Sighing into the season and becoming suddenly willing to wait. Each small sound a clarion call. Can you hear the stones breathing? For consideration, every small sigh in nature is an offering of spirit. The wisdom of the season lies in its ability to ease into itself. And there is peace in the rustle, whisper, and repose of autumn. Declarations to consider regarding serenity. I choose quietude. The smallest breath sustains me. And repletion in silence. that process intrigues you to try for yourself. If you'd like to see where I came with every word of the day, you can join us on the Facebook group, The Raystone Path. You can see it on my blog. 
there's things always linked below in my videos now. And you can subscribe to have them emailed to you. And I've specifically set them up in a format that I think will work on your mobile devices. Daily Reflections. The bits and pieces. <laughs> in my mind. Every morning and every evening. I wish you mirth and reverence. Mary Part. <laughs>